Today we're getting into the latest tech, EV, and Tesla news, including price increases for Tesla vehicles in less than a week, Tesla selling the Cybercab with a steering wheel, the new Neo humanoid robot available to order today, Sharp entering EVs and more, so let's get into it. First up today, over at Tesla, they have updated their mission statement. Previously, and it's still listed this way on their website, it was accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy. But now they're in the process of updating this to accelerating the world's transition to sustainable abundance. They posted this on their X account, and it's inside the Tesla diner. And this change definitely goes along with their newest master plan. That involves AI efforts, self-driving, and robots, far more than specifically energy itself. Of course, that is all involved with that, and all of these products are going to be operating thanks to their energy efforts, but it really outlines where their future is headed. They're not just planning to make electric vehicles and then home stationary storage. I think this has become quite obvious, especially because we only see them really introducing these cheaper models that are variations on the models we've seen for years at this point. And everything they're talking about is robots and full self-driving and the cyber cap and more for the future. But it's definitely a big step to see them updating their entire mission statement to be more broad than specifically accelerating energy and instead accelerating sustainable abundance. Now, when it comes to their current vehicles, there is a price increase that is coming for Tesla. Just recently, they announced that a price increase was coming for their cars sometime in November. At first, it wasn't quite clear if this was lease pricing, the overall price of the car or what, but now they have specified that lease prices are increasing by up to $80 on the Model Y on November 4th. The current pricing starts at $449 per month, but come November 4th, that will increase to $529 per month. Of course, then the question is, how long will it be at that increased price for? And we never really know, because of course, come the end of December, that will be at the end of the quarter, and they'll probably have some sort of incentive there. But this is not just the Model Y, it's the same for the Model 3. Right now, they're listing it at $329 a month to start, but they're also saying it's going to go up to $429 per month. So that's a $100 increase, even though they're listing $80 for this car as well. So maybe that will end up being less of an increase, it's probably just a typo that will be be fixed shortly on their website. Then it's the same situation for the Cybertruck. It's currently at $699 a month to start, and then it will come in at $749 per month starting November 4th. So again, this is one of those things where we wonder what deal will come after this? Will they increase the price, but then offer some sort of special incentive where you can get it at this price with $0 down, and then if you put more down, it's actually closer to the price that we've seen? Will they reintroduce a discount tied to the referral program? I wouldn't be surprised if we see some sort of deal come about in December or even just a couple of weeks after this price increase, but for the time being, that increase is on its way. But when it comes to the long future of Tesla, of course, we're talking about the Cybercap. And during the design phase of this car, Elon was very clear. He said, no mirrors, no pedals, no steering wheel. Let me be clear. This vehicle must be designed as a clean robo-taxi. We're going to take that risk, but we are not going to design some sort of amphibian frog that's a halfway car. We are all in on autonomy. However, Tesla's board chair, Robin Denholm, has said that the Cybercab may actually come equipped with a steering wheel and pedals after all, depending on regulatory demands there. In an interview with Bloomberg, she said, if we have to have a steering wheel, it can have a steering wheel and pedals. Of course, the original concept we've seen and many people have ridden in for the Cybercab is that this vehicle does not have a steering wheel or pedals because it's only designed for full autonomy and to be a robo-taxi with two passengers. A lot of people criticize the fact that it only has two seats inside, but when you look at the data on the typical ride share that somebody is doing, it's usually two or fewer people, so this is designed for the majority there, and then of course in the future we'll see other cars with more seats, or of course the Model Y like we're seeing today with more seats as well. But this shift is a pretty big one that indicates that Tesla is considering a version of the Cybercab to meet more traditional driving requirements, likely of course to broaden its market and satisfy regulation if that's required. Maybe they can get over the hurdle where it's approved to be self-driving, but they can't get it approved to just not include a steering wheel, so that's why it will have it. However, of course, if you introduce a steering wheel into that, it has to be fully drivable, which at the end of the day is probably what a ton of people want to see with this car. Essentially, it seems like this could be kind of a fallback option for Tesla if they can't get this approved. Or at the same time, it could be a fallback option that I think many have expected for a long time if they don't achieve full self-driving in a very timely manner. 
Instead of the cyber cab being exclusively fully autonomous, it would kind of be a hybrid solution that's very much designed for autonomy, but also has manual controls. At the same time, though, this definitely goes against what Elon talked about just last week at Tesla's earnings call. He said, quote, that's really a vehicle that's optimized for full autonomy. It, in fact, does not have a steering wheel or pedals and is really an enduring optimization on minimizing cost per mile for fully considered cost per mile of operation. For our other vehicles, they still have a little bit of the horse carriage thing going on, where obviously, if you've got steering wheel and pedals, and you're designing a car that people might want to go very direct past acceleration and tight cornering, like high performance cars, then you're going to design a different car than one that is optimized for a comfortable ride and doesn't expect to go past sort of 85 or 90 miles an hour. This is definitely an interesting one to see for Tesla because, again, it's one of those things where if they get this right, they will look like absolute geniuses. But I think a lot of people are very concerned about what happens if Tesla keeps kicking the can down the road and saying, yes, we're going to achieve full self-driving. But now they're putting all of their eggs in this basket of making this fully autonomous vehicle. So Tesla's chair saying they could add a steering wheel or pedals, probably something they've actually already engineered because they have to do that for testing as we've seen in the wild. It's probably for shareholders that are concerned about what will happen here if Tesla fails. Either way, Tesla's target for shipping the CyberCab is Q2 of 2026. So we'll see if they actually meet that deadline. Is that car coming out of the factory with no steering wheel or pedals or does it actually in fact have them? Now on the other side of things from the CyberCab that is designed specifically for autonomy, we have the Tesla Roadster. And Tesla is now hiring for a manufacturing engineer for the concept development and launch of battery manufacturing, specifically for the Roadster. They say, quote, in this role, you will take large scale manufacturing systems for new battery products and architectures from the early concept development stage through equipment launch optimization and handover to local operations teams. Battery development is at the heart of our company, and this is an exciting opportunity to work directly on the central challenges for the all-new Roadster product architecture while still in its early development stages. I think overall this timing makes a lot of sense and is no surprise, but hearing that it's still in the early development stages will definitely be disappointing to those who have been wanting to see the Roadster any time in the last few years. According to Franz von Holzhausen over at Tesla, they still plan to give us that demonstration of the Roadster's capability this year, but it seems like manufacturing still could be a long ways off, especially if they're so focused on autonomy, which we know that they are. Now, of course, what enables that cyber cab to come to be is self-driving efforts from Tesla. And their robotaxi network is really the fruition of that. And this network has now expanded in Austin. We can see the new map of what this looks like, and it's covering over 200 square miles at this point, which is pretty impressive. But of course, the new milestone that we'd like to see for that is the elimination of the safety monitor in the passenger seat or in the driver's seat in certain circumstances. That, of course, is the latest version of full self-driving, and version 14 is out now to customers. I just personally got version 14.1.4, and many others are getting this as well. And they list upcoming improvements in the release notes as overall smoothness and sentience, and parking spot selection and parking quality. In general, it's a very good update, but of course it has some bugs that Tesla is working out right now. And then there's one cool feature that my car has been doing, and that is the new camera cleaning motion. This specifically wipes over the center front cameras on the windshield in quick succession, and it uses the wiper fluid. Many people have noticed this feature, and it's now available on customer cars, and it will do it automatically, but currently it's limited to the new Model Y. Tesla confirmed that it's not yet available on any other models. And the reason is engineering complexity here. Tesla has to coordinate the fluid bursts, the wiper timing, the vehicle speed and wind conditions and all to ensure that the spray actually covers the correct windshield zone used by the cameras. And then that the windshield wipers are able to complete the motion it needs with the car temporarily being able to not see through that actually. Tesla has confirmed that this will be coming to more models in the future, including what they now call the Legacy Model Y, the pre-refresh Model Y, and then potentially other models with different wipers, actuators, and pump architectures. This is actually one of those features that I think many people thought would become essential for the future, and we're seeing it implemented here, because if those cameras get dirty, there's really nothing you can do. And if it's a fully autonomous system that you can't take over, and it doesn't have a steering wheel or pedals, it needs a solution for cleaning that camera, and actually actually, in theory, all of the cameras around the car as well. 
That's one piece that we haven't seen from Tesla, and then we'll see what their plan is for the CyberCap specifically, since I believe it's not designed with windshield wipers at this point in time. With the introduction of V14 though, Tesla introduced a new aggressive profile called Mad Max, and this is specifically on version 14.1.2. This enables essentially more assertive driving, faster lane changes, tighter gaps, and more aggressive overtaking, though Tesla says it doesn't actually exceed the speed of its hurry mode. However, NHTSA has opened an investigation covering approximately 2.9 million Tesla vehicles equipped with FSD because of this. This stems from 58 complaints, which include 14 crashes, 23 injuries, and then traffic law violations, such as running red lights when FSD was engaged. Per usual, this could be a long investigation that could lead to a recall or some enforcement action if the agency finds the feature poses an unreasonable risk to safety. But I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla fixes this and has an update in everyone's hands before that investigation actually concludes. We'll have to see though, because it is an interesting feature that can speed and do other things. People have reported it doing some less than ideal things. Now, when it comes to Tesla's robo-taxi competition, you have, of course, the main company, Waymo. And they just recently announced that their fleet of robo-taxis now drive an average of 186,000 miles autonomously each day. That's a 51% increase from February, so they are doing a very good job there. Of course, it's a very different platform using LiDAR, they trained for years, and they're in specific geofenced zones that are HD mapped and more. But when you ride in a Waymo, there is nobody in that vehicle. There is no safety monitor riding in the passenger seat or anything like that. It's quite an interesting world to see develop with all of these companies doing self-driving. I was just recently in Las Vegas and I saw Zooks vehicles along with a few others. I didn't get to ride the Zooks vehicle yet, but it is available and free for customers in a specific small zone in Las Vegas. There's a lot going on there and in humanoid robots, which we'll talk about in just a second. When it comes to electric vehicles across the board, there are two concerns for people. One is battery degradation, and the other is what you do with the battery at the end of its life. This week, we've gotten some new data for both of these concerns. A Swedish used car broker analyzed 1,366 vehicles, and this included 723 fully electric vehicles, along with 643 plug-in hybrids. They analyzed them for battery state of health in the used markets, and said that about 8 out of 10 of those used EVs retained at least 90% of their original battery capacity. Kia actually ranked highest overall for maintaining battery health, and then the top individual models were the Kia EV6, Kia e Nero, and then the Tesla Model Y. There were a few others listed there, like the Opel Maka e and the Mazda MX-30. Essentially, they found that usage factors matter more than brand design for battery endurance. Age, climate, driving style, and charging habits all played the largest role here. So this study is a little limited, but as usual, it goes against the concern that many have that EV batteries degrade very fast and must be avoided when looking for used cars. Many used EVs still have very great battery capacity, as we're seeing here. Now, when it comes to the end of a battery's life, Chinese recycling programs are now reporting up to 99.6% recovery of high-value cathode materials. These include nickel, cobalt, and manganese. For lithium recovery rates specifically, they list 96.5% success. There's a lot to still build up when it comes to EV battery recycling, but it's great to see how successful this is turning out to be for those that are recycling batteries. I can't wait to see what the future looks like when batteries reach the end of their life and then they get properly recycled like this. At a certain point in a very distant future, we may not actually have to be mining for these metals after all, because 99.6% or so is being fully recovered and put into to brand new batteries. But now over to humanoid robots. Neo is a new humanoid robot from 1X that you can order today. It's a humanoid home assistant designed to help with everyday chores like opening doors, fetching items, turning the lights on and off, doing laundry, and more. Today it relies heavily on human teller operation, and they say this is human in the loop. Initially, human operators will actually guide Neo in tasks that the robot hasn't yet learned to do autonomously. It will help it learn it, and then, of course, teach it to do so autonomously. Some technical specs here that it stands about 5 foot 6 inches tall, it weighs around 66 pounds, and features hands with 22 degrees of freedom. Then it has about 4 hours of battery life, can lift 154 pounds, carry 55 pounds, and then has 3 speakers and a 22 decibel max noise level. This is specifically designed for home integration and safety, so it's very much designed with a soft exterior. And it uses a sweater-style skin, and has tendon drive actuation and quiet operation overall. 
Overall, the design looks quite cool and very welcoming, and that seems very intentional on their part. But of course, users will need to share a lot of data and allow teleoperators into their home via the robot for the training and improvement of the robot's autonomy as a whole. That's definitely not something that most people want to sign up for, at least initially. One cool thing they demonstrated though is that you can always open the app and then see the point of view of the robot in exactly what it is doing at that time. Right now it's being offered for pre-order at $20,000 or you can subscribe for $499 per month and they say that shipments are expected to start in 2026. You can order today with a $200 deposit, and that is fully refundable. We've seen a lot of promises when it comes to humanoid robots, but this might be the first one in this kind of a price range that is actually offered up for order. You can just go to the website and put your order in today, and according to them, deliveries would start in the US sometime in 2026. I'm very curious to see where this all will go. I think many expect that, yeah, this will probably come to market, but then it will just fail because it won't actually be able to do much in people's homes, it will get bad reviews, people will be upset that they bought it, and then the whole thing will fall flat, and then be taken over by a larger company like Tesla making their Optimus robot, or figure partnering with OpenAI. There is a lot coming in this space, and I'll be sure to keep you posted on this channel. Next up, over at Lucid, they've partnered with NVIDIA to integrate their Drive AV platform and the Drive AGX Thor compute system into future midsize vehicles. Their roadmap of self-driving features here starts with a level 2 plus plus feature for the current models that they sell, like the Lucid Gravity SUV. And then they plan for full level 4 capability in the future, which is eyes off, hands off, and mind off overall. Lucid says that this will use their full multi-sensor suite cameras, radar, and LiDAR, as well as dual AGX Thor computers running NVIDIA Drive OS in future vehicles to enable level 4 autonomy. They also talked about other integrations with NVIDIA to help with their manufacturing and more. So we really are seeing most EV companies that are taking the future seriously, diving headfirst into AI here. With Lucid, we're seeing them partnering with NVIDIA. With Tesla, they're doing a lot of things themselves. With Rivian, they're doing a lot themselves as well. But either way, we can see that this is a big part of the future. Now over at Ford, they've paused production of their electric pickup truck, the F-150 Lightning, at their Rogue Electric Vehicle Center in Michigan. This was influenced by a fire at an aluminum supplier, which disrupted the supply of aluminum used heavily in the F-Series trucks. So they're redirecting production and workforce toward the gasoline and hybrid F-Series trucks, which they say are more profitable and use less of the constrained aluminum supply. All hourly workers at the Rogue facility are being transferred to join a new third shift at the neighboring Dearborn truck plant to support the uptick in gas and hybrid F-Series production. Now, of course, this is the cause here overall, but they say Ford F-150 Lightning assembly will remain paused, and they don't give a clear timeline as to when this will resume. Overall, in Q3 of 2025, their EV business posted a large loss of about $1.4 billion, whereas their other cars did a lot better. And this seems to be another factor factor behind this pivot. Over at Chevy, they've launched a new 0% financing offer for 60 months on the 2026 Equinox EV for well-qualified buyers. This deal effectively knocks about $4,000 off the price compared to prior offers if you were financing. The base starting price of the Equinox EV is $33,600 for the front-wheel drive model, and of course, other trims cost more. For now, this is a limited-time deal and subject to credit approval, of course, through GM, but it could be a very good deal if you're looking for a more affordable EV. The Equinox EV is a pretty great option out there that delivers a lot in a good package at a reasonable price. Now, last up today over at Sharp, they have unveiled the second iteration of their EV concept, LDK+. With this, they're showing off an EV concept that is designed as a living space extension of your home. The concept is built on the base of the Model A, developed by Foxconn, and they blend a compact body with a spacious interior to deliver maneuverability and comfort. It has a rotating driver's seat, a console box with table and projector between driver and passenger seats, a rear ceiling mounted roll down screen for use as a theater or conference space, and an integrated smart home system so that the vehicle can connect with kitchen appliances, HVAC, laundry, solar and energy systems, and vehicle to home systems. They say that a sales timeline for a Sharp branded EV that is based on this concept could be fiscal year 2027, specifically in Japan. This is kind of the latest move for a brand that many have heard of, but don't expect to actually be entering the EV space. It will be interesting to see if this actually comes to market. 
That's all the latest tech EV and Tesla news for today. So in the meantime, if you want to see the new battery that could finally bring the 400 mile Model Y to market, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.